Hello everyone. In the previous lectures of Webber-Bosch cycle, we have discussed Rankine cycle, Reed cycle, and regenerative cycle. In today's lecture, we will discuss on binary Webber-Bosch cycle. While talking of Webber-Bosch cycle, we use the term Rankine cycle because the ideal cycle for Webber-Bosch cycle is Rankine cycle. Our today's topic is binary Webber-Bosch cycle, which involves two rankin cycles simultaneously that uses different working fluids now let's let us see how this binary webber-bosch cycle works so in general in the webber-bosch cycle the most commonly used working fluid is water but at high temperature sometimes this water is not used to get the high efficiency for the webber-bosch cycle so to get high efficiency from the rankine cycle some other working fluids are also used some of the examples are mercury sodium potassium and sodium potassium mixture but out of all these working fluids only mercury has been used in practice so here we discussed basically the mercury steam binary cycle so let's see the schematic diagram of mercury steam binary cycle and its corresponding ts diagram see here we consider this is the mercury cycle and this is the steam cycle so as per the steam cycle that already we discussed in the previous lectures that the steam cycle consisting of the basic four components that is boiler turbine condenser and pump so for mercury cycle the same components are used that is boiler turbine condenser and pump so the functions are just similar to the steam cycle and here in the steam cycle you have noticed here that two more components are added that is economizer and superheater which we discussed later on so see this boiler this is the boiler of the mercury cycle so this boiler is used to produce the mercury vapor which is fed to this turbine to produce the work so this mercury vapor which is enter to the turbine that is in saturated state so see that saturated state is represented on this ts diagram that is in state a then that saturated mercury vapor will perform some work and after that that comes out from this turbine and that will enter to the condenser so that will enter to the condenser so as that will enter to the condenser so in condenser which process is going on that is the condensation process so as condensation process so that must be takes place at constant pressure and as <clears throat> the condensation process it means the heat rejection is there so from this condenser the heat is rejected and that rejected heat will be absorbed by the boiler of the steam cycle that's why it is combinedly drawn here that is condenser and boiler together it is clearly visible in this diagram right so from this condenser as heat is rejected and it is absorbed by the boiler after that that vapor is converted to what that is liquid so that liquid is considered to be the saturated liquid which is considered here that is c now this saturated liquid mercury is fed to the boiler by means of this mercury pump so i think you understood this mercury cycle now see we consider the steam cycle so here it is the boiler then turbine condenser pump but in between this boiler and turbine we use another component that is superheater and in between this pump and boiler here we use the economizer so what is the function of this economizer and superheater so let's discuss economizer economizer is a mechanical device which preheat the liquid water as this is the steam cycle it means the water is the working fluid so preheat the water so how it will preheat the water so that heat will be 
gathered from the surrounding that is from flue gases that is from the chimney so which are the other components of a steam power plant so this economizer will do what that in general it will preheat the liquid water before it will enter to the boiler now in boiler which energy is added that is the heat energy which is rejected by the condenser of the mercury cycle and that will absorb by the boiler so so this in the boiler so as heat energy is added so that heat energy will make this uh, liquid water or convert this liquid water into vapor and that vapor is considered to be the dry saturated vapor dry saturated vapor right so that is in form of state 5 so that dry saturated vapor now again it is fed to the superheater that is fed to the superheater in superheater what happens to this saturated vapor that becomes superheated vapor so in superheater the saturated vapor is again heated and it becomes the superheated vapor. So the function of superheater is very simple that it heated the wet steam or the saturated steam to make it or to convert this wet steam or saturated steam to superheated steam. So this is the function of superheated. So in form of superheated state, the steam will enter to the steam turbine. So that is clearly shown in this TS diagram. So in form of saturated steam, it will, the steam will enter to the superheater and as it is heated again, so it becomes superheated steam. So that state 5 becomes state 1. So it is clearly represented here. Now as this superheated steam will enter to the steam turbine. So that performs some work. And after performing the work it will enter to the condenser. Where the condensation process will take place at constant pressure. It means the heat is rejected. So as heat is rejected from the steam. So that steam will convert to water so that water again fit to the economizer or then to the boiler by means of this steam pump and for the steam pump and steam per turbine the process which we consider previously that is reversible adiabatic process so i think you can understood this ts diagram of this mercury steam binary cycle it is very simple if you if you understood the Rankine cycle, it means you easily understood this bind that is mercury steam binary cycle. Here we just consider two Rankine cycle simultaneously with two different working fluid. So students, I think you understood this mercury steam binary cycles. Or if you have any queries, you can ask in the comment section. Thank you.